Hello, everybody. Good evening. Hi, good evening. Hi, how are you, guys? I'm good. Hi, how are you? I'm doing well, thank you for asking. And you? Uh, fine, fine. Fine. A little tired because I went to San Miguel City this day, but... Oh, yeah. yeah. Uh, I imagine. It is, it is, you know, it is tired, right? To, to oh, yeah. travel to one place, from one place to another one. Yeah, I understand. That is really hard. Thank you for being here. It's nice to have you in the meeting. Very good. What about the rest? Okay. I have Mauricio. Thank you, please. Hi, I am fine. Good. Excellent. Okay. What about you? How are you guys? Everything good? Fine. Good thing. What you? I'm doing well. Thank you for asking. And you? I'm I'm good. Nice, nice. Thank you. What about Oksana? Hi, teacher. <laughs> How are <Hi>. you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. Thank you for asking. And you? Um, I'm pretty good. Thanks. You're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. Uh, um, little... Yeah. Yeah, uh, a little tired. <laughs> tired. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I, I imagine, like I said before, we, we finished the whole day exhausted. And yeah, we're here. I appreciate your time. Believe me. I know that you are busy and you have a lot of things to do, but you have to make great efforts, right? Very nice. Thank you for joining. We're going to begin. Uh, by the way, I hope, I hope you could have a great day today. And this is a new session. We're going to start. I want to know if everybody has finished with the platform. I remember that most of you told me last week and even yesterday that you already finished with the platform. Is everything okay? Have you finished? Oh, yes. Yes, I finished. I finished my, my, Test, final test. Okay, nice. Thank you. Thank you for completing it. Thanks. What about Luis? Have you finished? Uh, I finished. Yes. Awesome. One. Thank you, please. Are you? Yes, teacher. I finished. Yeah. I finished too, teacher. Excellent. Okay, congratulations. Congratulations, everybody. Uh, well, Something that I was saying yesterday, and I, I told your, to your classmates, I told your classmates, sorry, yesterday that, you know, I asked for, you know, the, the situation that you told me last, last week, you were asking me about a certificate. And yeah, I asked someone, I asked an authority for an English cooperative, I informed or for her about the, the problem that you had with the certificate and it was about the the date the date so I informed them about that and yeah they noticed they realized that yeah there was a problem with that and you know don't worry because yeah there is a problem with the certificate specifically with the date and I think they are going to fix it or they already fixed it so you can check it out and let me know if everything is fine, okay? For the certificate, because you asked me about that last week, last week, okay? I don't know if you have any questions. Do you have any questions? No, no teacher. No, no, okay. no question. No, no question. Awesome. I will check again Oh, my certificate. Okay, okay, okay. nice. Perfect. Okay. Yeah, check it out and let me know if now it's it's okay. Okay. Good. Well, thank you one more time, everybody, because we have finished, we have ended. That's really nice. Congratulations. Keep going. Keep working really hard because you know 
we have to make a lot of a lot of force prices then we're going to see the result okay good let's continue now that i know that everybody has finished with the platform with the because that i have in the session i will ask later to your other classmates if they have finished with the platform let me display the presentation and let me know if you can see it you see it yes yes okay yes Good. Okay. Well, this is session number 14. And well, as you know, today is Tuesday, March 23rd, 21. What we have for today, the topic is need a job. Need a job. We're going to practice with some specific things in today's session, and we will have a conversation, right? And we're going to have, you know, the following thing. Open up to the following part. Let's start talking about gerunds. Gerunds with short responses. Gerunds with short responses. When do we use or what is a gerund? A gerund is formed by adding ing, ing form to a verb. Okay, so we add, in this case, the ing form to a verb. And this gerund, the gerund functions as a noun. And this is function, functions as a noun. All right, but we have different uses. Right now we're gonna focus on some specific you know, forms. And well, we have that the gerund can only use after quiet a few different verbs. That is the main use, that is the use that we're going to have in the session. We're going to talk about uh, how we use gerunds when we have a main verb, for example. We have a main verb, and then we have another verb, and this verb is in 94, right? What are some common, common verbs in other forms followed by gerunds? Remember, we have the main verb, the main verb, and that main verb is in the base form. The verb is in base form. And we have a second verb. So the main verb is followed by a gerund, the second verb, okay? And that verb, like I said before, it's in, a, it's in, in an ing form. It's an ing form, all right? We have some common verbs some common verbs in other forms follow by gerunds. For example, when we have like, love, hate, enjoy, prefer, regret, imagine, star, don't mind, we have another forms, don't mind, and we have, for example, be plus an adjective plus preposition. Etc. We have more verbs, right? But those are some specific verbs. Uh, and we can use the gerunds. The gerunds. All right. Any questions so far? No question. Okay. No, teacher. Good. Okay, remember, we use. We use, give me a second. We use gerunds or gerunds are formed with the ing form. Okay? Let me give you more explanations. More explanations. Okay, let's go to, or let's discuss the structure. What is the structure that we use when we have these forms? When we have a main verb. And the main verb is followed by a gerund or a second verb. What do we use it or how we construct those ideas? Let me show you. The structure is the following. We have the subject, the verb, and the gerund. That is the first possibility. For example, if you say, I like, Doing exercises. Um, 
exercise every day. I like doing exercises every day. We are following the structure, the subject, the verb, which is the main verb. It is in the base form. And then we have the gerund. That is the second verb. So the gerund or the verb is in ing form. Ing form. And then we finish with a complement, as you know. I like doing exercises every day. Another example, it could be like, I hate, hate waking up early. Let's say early on Sundays. Sundays, because I know that most of us, most of us uh, wake up early during the week. Okay? But I think, yeah, it's the same, right? We hate, what some people hate waking up early during the week, etc. I hate waking up early on Sundays. You can see one more time, we're using the subject, the verb, and the, 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 the gerund. Okay, in this case, the verb in the ing form. I hate waking up early on Sundays. Right? That is the way we use the first structure. It's even a structure because I have a second one. Is when we have this form, B plus adjective plus preposition. This is the second form. We have a subject, we have a verb, which in this case is a main verb, and it's the verb B. The verb B. What is the verb B? What is the verb B? Or the verb to be? Um is R. Exactly. Um or is. Good. What is the verb B? We use the verb B plus an adjective. Uh, what are some adjectives, guys? What are some adjectives? For example, we use good, we use bad, we use interested, interested, etc. We have more. That is an adjective, the number position. In this case, we'll, we'll use prepositions, or we're talking about prepositions, we use some specific prepositions. We don't use prepositions of place in this case. We use other prepositions. Uh, we say, for example, at, we use in, we use on, we use about, we use for, etc. Those are specific prepositions. We don't use prepositions of place, right? Yeah, we have in and on in there. We have in and on. Those are the positions of place, but those are some, some let's say, exceptions, exceptions. Let me show you why. That is the second structure. Again, subject plus verb B. As I kind of said, am or is. Then we have the adjective. We have some specific adjectives too. Then the preposition. And we have the gerund. Let me give you some examples. It could be, I am good at using the computer. I am good at using the computer. We're following the structure, structure, subject, the verb be on um, this case, the adjective, because we, we're using good. Preposition is at, and then we have the gerund using. The verb is use, or we the angle form, using the computer. I am good at using the computer. That is the way we use gerunds for the second structure. Another example, it could be like she is interested in learning French. Then we're following the structure. She, subject, is, the verb be, interested, is an adjective, in, is a preposition, learning French, or learning is a gerund, and we have the complement. And the verb in this case is learn, learn. So we're saying the gerund, kind of four, right? Something that we have to take into account too is that we have these specific forms. 
those are some uh, collocations. It means that they are together. They are always together. Good at, interested in. Another possibility could be like, they are worried, they are worried about failing the test. Again, the subject, the verb be are, worry is the adjective, and about is a preposition. This is another collocation. It means that the words are together. So they are together. They don't separate. They don't separate. They are worried about failing the test. Because the, the gerund is failing. Failing the test because we're using ID form. The main verb is fail. Fail. Failing the test. Okay, the main verb is learn. And in the previous one, the main verb is use. This is the second combination that we can make. Right with subject, verb, the adjective, the preposition, and the verb. That is the second combination that we can make. All right. Any questions? All of mine? Comments? Is there any questions? Anderson. Yeah. I understand too. Okay. Moving on. Moving on to the following one. Well, like I said before, we follow the structures. Here we have some examples. Also, gerunds after certain words or after other words. Other words. For example, we have the subject plus the verb plus the gerund. And we have, they enjoy listening to music. They enjoy listening to pop music, etc. Next, he regrets not doing his homework. Not doing his homework. We have a negative point there. We can say that, we can. Can say he regrets he is not not doing his homework. Right? Another example, she prefers that is another verb that we we use it and we we can use in this case we can utilize ing form. He prefers walking to running. He prefers walking, or in that case, it could be all running, or running, okay? He prefers walking or running, all right? That is the way we use the first structure, all right? And like I said before, we have some common words. Common words like enjoy, regret, prefer, imagine, etc. okay? I have a question. Sure. In, in which case, uh, in the when you use verb to be, uh, the gerund acting as a noun, or, or mm. what is the, the example about that? Yeah, good. That is another use. Yeah, that, that is another use that gerund, that gerunds have. Yeah, when a gerund, a gerund acts, acts as a noun. Yeah, that is another way. That is another it's way. another way. Exactly. Okay. That is another use. For example, when you say, in that case, you have at the beginning the gerund. The gerund, and this gerund is acting as a noun. This is the noun. Then you have a verb. And the verse tends to be a, you know, the verb be plus a complement. For example, when you say working extra hours, extra hours is 
beneficial for employees. Yeah, in that case, um, the gerund is acting as a noun. This is the noun. Working extra hours is beneficial for employees. Okay. So the verb is, is not working. No, that is a noun. Working extra hours is beneficial for employees. Is is a verb and beneficial for employees. That is the way we use, um, you know, gerund for gerunds as a noun or as noun. Another example, it could be like doing a lot of exercises is healthy. It's healthy. Doing a lot of the exercises is healthy. That is another example. Doing a lot of the exercises, doing a lot of exercises is a noun. The verb is is, and then we have healthy. That is another use that gerunds have. Yes. Okay, I understand. Yeah. Regard. Yeah. And. And you you can use uh, only the verb to be in this case. Um, or you can use another other spur. We can use some other verbs. Yes, we can. We can. For example, let me see. Let me give you another example. Um, we can say. Learning a new language has many advantages. This is a way. Learning a new language has many advantages. Again, learning a new language, that is a noun. That is a compound noun. Because we're using gerund, and we're using some other form, some other parts of the speech. And then we have the verb has. Has many advantages. That is the way we can use it with other verbs. Okay. Yes. Good. Any questions, guys? Any questions? And I have another question. <laughs> oh, sure, don't worry. And in this case, uh, oh, no, no, in the previous and the first example about yes. the when you use, uh, no, no. This one? Yes. No, no, no. I oh, see, so yeah, just the verb to be. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, this one's? Yes. When you use preposition, the this the 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 gerund acting as a what is the function of the gerund? Oh, okay. The gerund. Well, in this case, it is called a gerund. Gerund. But it's Only. like a, it's a verb. It's a verb. Yeah, so is, if you look for for this specific Alexei topic, you're going to see that this is a a, a gerund, but it's acting as a as an object. I think it's an object. Um. Yes, that is an object, but that is the way we use it. We tend to call it a gerund. Gerund. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Any questions? Or questions? Let me know. Let me know. You can ask me. Everything clear? Yes. Yes, sir. Everything clear. Good. Okay, we will continue. Well, it's clear. Good. Okay, we have the two forms as we were discussing the subject, the verb, and the gerund. 
when we have this first structure, structure, the main verb, we have the main verb, it is base form, we have the gerund, but that gerund, it's a second verb. Yeah, it's a second verb. We have the combination, and that second verb is in IG4. That's why it is a gerund. With the second structure, as Roxana asked me, yeah, so what is the, the, the function, the function of a gerund? Yeah, we have the subject, we have the main verb, the main verb is a verb B in this case, adjective, the preposition, and we have a gerund. What is the function of that gerund? Like I said before, it's the object. So in some case, you know, it is called like the object of a preposition. That is it, the name, okay? So yeah, it's an object. It's an object, that gerund, and it's the object of a preposition, okay? Because we have a preposition and then we have gerund. Object. Okay. That okay. is a function. Yes. That is a function. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. And here we have more examples. Common prepositions. In this case, we're using, you know, um, let's say the first, the second structure, the second structure, or when we know that when we have a, a preposition, we have to use the verb in a ing4 in an ing4 right or a gerund because after a preposition we have to use a gerund or a verb in ing4 for example when you say i apologize for saying that i apologize for saying that in that case yeah you can tell me but teacher that is not the second structure yes it is not you're you're correct because by the subject, the verb and the adjective, the preposition, and the gerund. But this is another way. In some cases, we have, let's say, um, some phrasal verbs, some phrasal verbs, or some verbs that are accompanied, accompanied with a preposition. In this case, apologize for, that is, the verb apologize and apologize accompanies, it's accompanied with. I apologize for this is his for saying that we use gerund. Gerund. For the second example, we have the structure, the structure that we we're discussing previously. And the subject will be adjective, preposition, preposition, sorry, and then the gerund. For example, I'm interested in learning more. I'm interested in learning more. In that case, yeah, we accomplish the structure. Because we have subject, verb, adjective, preposition, and then the gerund. Next, another possible structure, another possible example with the second structure, sorry. It could be like, we are excited about visiting a new place. Excited about, excited is the adjective, and about is the preposition. We're excited about visiting as a gerund a new place. And that gerund is acting, like I said before, an object of a purpose. Okay. Next, we stopped him from crossing the street. Okay. So in that case, we have we stopped him from, from is a preposition, from crossing the street. And the last one, I look forward to meeting you. I look forward to meeting you. Okay? So this is a way we structure we structure the ideas. It returns. Returns. Okay? Do you have any questions? Oh, uh, um, I understand that when you use uh, adjective, uh, for um, you use the verb to be, and, and when you use a, another uh, another verb, for example, a stop and apologize or or look for look, you 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 don't yes you don't use a, an adjective. The majority no, uh, you use no. adjective when you is when you use the verb to be, right? 
Exactly, exactly. Use uh, an additive when you when you have a a verb to be the verb to be sorry the verb to be. Yeah, in those cases because we have some other verbs and the verbs are again like I said before the verbs are accompanied with a preposition. For example, apologize, apologize, sorry, apologize, apologize. I'm sorry. Apologize is a main verb. Apologize is a main verb, and that main verb is accompanied with apologize for, apologize for, apologize for saying, um, I don't know, for saying the wrong message, for example, or apologize for giving the wrong number, etc. So it depends, it depends. And with the other one, be careful, be careful because with this example, when you say stop, a stop is another verb, it's another verb that you can use generally. For example, when you say a common example could be, I just stop smoking. First one, I just stop smoking. A stop is another verb, the main verb. And then we have the gerund. I stopped smoking, or I stopped. I stop um, learning French, for example. I don't know because something happened. I stopped learning French. But in that case, as you can see in the example, we have a another pronoun. We stop someone. We stop him for crossing the street. So it's different because we're using another pronoun, and then we have a preposition. Okay. So that is a way we have to differentiate the way we use the gerunds. Okay. Questions? Teacher, and yeah. in this case, I can I can say I apologize I apologize for say that. We no, you have, you have infinite verb. You have to no. You you cannot use infinitive. Why? Because this is this is a rule. This is a rule. A rule. When you have a preposition, it's a grammar after, rule. No it's a grammar rule. Exactly. Always after the preposition. Exactly after after a preposition, you use a gerund. A gerund. If you want to use a verb, of course, if you want to use a verb, you have to use a gerund. Okay. It's a part of the language. Yes. You can, you cannot change. Exactly. Okay. 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 Senate. <laughs> okay. I think. <laughs> yeah. Any questions? Uh, in the, um, when you use uh, uh, after the the bear stop, if if you use a uh, uh, pro, uh, object pronoun. Uh, you can use, uh, oh no. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, because in that case you have uh, something else. I stop someone, I stop a person, for example, do something. For example, if you say, I stop, let me see, I stop my brother, from what they are doing. So, for example, no, they from um, from drinking. Sorry, alcohol. Um. I stop my brother. I stop someone from drinking. From drinking alcohol. That is the way we use it. Okay. Anybody else? Questions? No, no I understand. Okay. I think. <laughs> okay, listen. Now we have in here gerunds, uh, gerunds 
and with short responses. Short responses. When a person says, for example, an affirmative statement, we have an explanation with parentheses, doesn't have a negative word, an affirmative statement, you can agree or disagree, right? For example, if you say, I am good at using a computer, so why in this case? Okay, so am I, so am I. I am good at using at using a computer, so am I. But it means that you agree with that person. So you can do it too, you can do it too, all right? For example, imagine that, well, I'm not, I know that this is true, okay? But this is just an example, okay? Imagine that Juan told me, um, okay, uh, Mr. Basket, I am good at using the computer. So am I, so am I. I'm saying that I can do it too, right? Or you can say I am too. I am too is another way to agree. Another one, me too, me too. So those, some, those are some short responses that you use them with gerunds, gerunds. Another possibility is when someone said, for example, I love playing basketball. Basketball. Okay, someone can tell me in a, in a conversation, I love playing basketball. Then I can say, I can say, so do I. So do I. So do I. So do I. We can say me too. Me too. That's another way. So do I. So do I means that you agree with that person and you can do it too. Or you love in this case, sorry. You love playing basketball, okay? So that is the way you agree to someone. This is in, in an affirmative. In negative is different. For example, if someone said, negative four could be like, I am not good at, let's say, um, using teams, like Zoom, using Zoom. I am not good at using Zoom. Another person can say, that is the opposite. We use G, I'm not. That is an expression that we use. G, I'm not. Say I am not, or you can say I'm not. I'm not. Another possibility it could be, and in these cases we use neither, neither am I. Neither am I. So that is the opposite. In that case, we're expressing disagreement. Disagreement, and we are disagree with that person. I mean, we're saying that we cannot do it too. Neither am I. I'm not good at using the computer, neither, neither am I, neither am I. Or you can say, not me. That is another way to say, not me. Another possibility? You can say, for example, I hate, I hate, um, what? Okay, I hate, I don't know. I hate eating vegetables. All I can say. And another person can say, neither do I. Neither do I. So you're present, you disagree with me. You disagree. Hey, teacher. Tell me, tell me. Sorry, sorry, teacher. I have a question. Tell me, tell me. Sure. Yeah, but uh, uh, please show the, uh, you write the sentence, please. Yeah, sure, sure. Okay, and this gay, I hate eating vegetables, but if the case, I don't hate the, the eating no. vegetable. Okay. What is the answer? I, I understand your point, very good. That's, that's a good observation. 
When we have hate, the verb hate, we know that that verb is a negative. That, that verb, I'm sorry, that verb has a negative meaning. Mm. So you, that's why you don't say, I don't hate. I mean, if you, if you no. say, I don't hate, you say something in the affirmative. Okay, I hate eating vegetables, but yes. the, the other person uh, like the vegetable. What hmm. is the answer? Okay, good question. Uh, well, in that case, um, well, there are some ways, there are some ways you can respond to those specific things, but someone probably, you know, probably you can say one possibility could be like, I disagree with you. But in that case, you're saying, you know, uh, you know, in my case, I like it. And I, I disagree with you. I love them. I love, I them. love them. Yeah. You cannot say, you cannot say so, so do I, because uh, the statement is in negative. It's in negative. Yeah. Okay. You can say this case, I disagree with you. Okay. I disagree with you because I love them. I love them. Another possibility, talking about negative form, we can say, for example, I don't like eating, for example, let's say pig. And someone can say, well, neither do, neither do I. Neither do I. So in that case, yeah, the, the, the sentence is coming as a form. I don't like eating pizza. Neither do I. In this case, we use hate. We use an affirmative form because hate has a negative meaning. If you say I don't hate, it's because you're saying something in hate, in, in the film, sorry. I don't hate, but it's not common to see that expression, I don't hate. I don't hate, I don't know, eating baseballs. So it means that you like them. You like them. Okay? Any questions about this form? Sounds so good. Everything is good. All right, we're going to summarize. We're going to summarize what we have seen so far because I have Gabriela in the meeting. Hi, Gabriela. Hello. Welcome. Hi, teacher. How are you, Gabriela? I'm fine, teacher. Good. Thank you for being here. Could you listen to the previous explanations, Gabriela? Yes, teacher. Yeah. Do you have any questions or do you want me to explain the previous part? I can do it. I think we're going to summarize. Okay, we, we were saying that we use gerunds. We use gerunds or a gerund is formed by adding ing, ing form to a verb. We use then inverse. We use ing form inverse in this case and gerund a gerund functions functions as a noun the gerund is commonly used after quiet a, a few different verbs some common verbs that we use are like love hate enjoy prefer regret imagine star don't mind be have other forms like be plus an adjective plus preposition. And these are the structures. The first structure is because we have a main verb, okay? So we have other verbs and we use gerunds. The subject, the verb, in this case in base form, it depends. And we have the main verb, that is the main verb. Then we have a second verb. The second verb is in gerund, it's in gerund. But we have these specific words like love, hate, enjoy, prefer, etc. That is the first one. I was giving your classmates some examples like I like doing exercises every day. I hate waking up early on Sunday. But so we're using the I the gerund. We are using the gerund. And we have the verb like let's say hate. I like doing exercises every day, and I hate waking up early on Sunday. 
That is the first part. The second structure we have a subject plus a verb plus an adjective plus a preposition. Okay, and then we have the gerund. The gerund in that case is acting as an as an object of the preposition. Okay, so we were saying, for example. We use the verb be and the verb be is am or is in the simple present, of course. Then we have the prepositions, we use at, in, on, about, for. So I clarify, I clarify that when we have the prepositions, we have some certain preposition. Okay, we don't use preposition place, like between, in front of, you know, because they have different ways. And well, we have some examples here. I am good at using the computer. Subject, the verb be, the adjective, the preposition, and then the gerund. Use it. Another example, she is interested in learning French. And they are worried about filling the text. That is the second way. That is the second way, okay? So then I was giving you more examples based on the structures. They enjoy listening to music. He regrets not doing the homework. She prefers walking or running. And well, the converse that we can use for germs. All right, enjoy regrets, prefer imagine. And then I was giving you more examples. You know, I apologize for saying that. Interested in learning more. We're excited about visiting a new place. We stopped in from crossing the street. And I look forward to meeting you. Okay. And we were explaining what well, we have responses. Gerunds with short responses. All right. You can uh, show teacher. agreement and disagreement. Yes, Sonia. Uh, I have a question about the this this uh I I am a little conf I am a, uh, it's confused for me to understand that when you use I am good at using a computer but you use short response agree and disagree in this case uh, in when you explain the Luis about the short response about the disagree and the in the other sentence you use a a long answer not short response. What is the difference when the, when you say mm, and no. agree and disagree in this case? Well, in this case, you're referring to this one, right? To this example. Yes. Yes, but no. In this case, in this case, is different. You know, you can have long answers or short answers, right? In this case, I hate eating vegetables because Luis was asking me if. For example, someone said, someone says like, well, you, you don't like them or you hate them, but I love, I love them. I love baseballs. So how can you answer in that way? So you can say, I disagree with you. That could be the, the way, only that. But if you want to add more, you can do it. You can do it, okay? In this case, I hate eating baseballs. Then you can say, neither do I. And we have affirmative form. For example, like I said before, if you say, um, I am, okay, what is it? Oh, okay, it's this one. I am good at using the computer. We use agree, so am I. I am too, me too, only that. An affirmative form. Then I was giving you another form. I love playing basketball, so do I. Because in that case, we don't have the verb be. We have a main verb. have another verb or other formations. I love I love playing basketball. So uh, we're going to say, so, so am I. So am I because it's different. We use the auxiliaries. Do in this case because we're using simple present. And in this case, we use the verb be because we're using the verb be. We we'll have to use the auxiliaries. So am I or so do I. So it depends. And then we have the negative form. For negative form, we use other ones. We use disagree. Great. For example, when you say, I am not good at using Zoom, 
neither am I, neither am I. Or the other one example, I don't like eating pizza, neither do I. So you're saying that you don't like it. You don't like it, okay? Did you understand? Uh, yes, I Yes, but uh, I don't know <laughs> if I we understand all. I mean, in, I mean, we just, in, in we, this case, it's a affirmative sentence, and you use disagree and agree with with no, a affirmative agree. sentence. Only agree. Or only agree. Only agree. Oh, I confuse when this one. I think you use agree and disagree no. with about this this sentence. No, because in this case, if you say something in affirmative, imagine that I, I, I tell you, Sana, I love playing basketball. And you too, I mean, you love playing basketball. You have to tell me, so do I. Because that is an affirmative. You're saying that you like it too, or you love it. Okay? But if I say, for example, Roxana, I don't like eating pizza. Eating pizza, sorry, it's a negative form. You don't like it too? You have to tell me, neither do I. Neither do I. Oh. That is the way we use it. Okay, in this is in this example with, with the chart, if you say I am not good at using computer, you use G, no, I am not. Yes. Or not me. Not me, exactly. Mm, okay. That is the way. That is the way. Yeah, because as we saw previously, you can agree. You can agree with someone. If I tell you, for example, I am good at using the computer, someone else tell me, tell me, sorry, so do I. So it means that that person is good at using the computer too. Or if I said, for example, I am not good at telling jobs, for example, I am not good. So someone can tell me, neither, neither am I. So it means that that person is not good to think or a current job, sir. Okay, I, I, I think I understand. You use the the uh, short answer when you uh, when you agree. you agree with the with the statement. Yes. If it's affirmative and affirmative, it's narrative yeah. and narrative. Exactly. Okay. That is the way. Yeah. Very good. Okay. Any questions, my questions? Let me know. No Is questions. <laughs> I understand. No I think. questions. Okay, we're going to say now in a real a scenario, we have a conversation. We're going to identify those gerunds and short answers. Short answers. You know, we can use these short answers or short responses to gerunds. In some cases, we can use them with other forms. Now, for example, if someone said, let's begin. This is about Johnny and Lisa. Imagine that Johnny, John says, I really need to find a job. So why? The person is agree. He's agree with John because Lisa is looking for a new job. Okay? So that's why Lisa said, so do I, or me too, me too. Okay, here we go. Listen, I really need to find a new job. So do I. Have you found any options yet? Yes. Look at this job opportunity. They're looking for, for a typist. I am good at using the computer, Microsoft Office package. I'm not. I am not. I think you have to apply for that position and I have to look for more options. You know, I like designing apps that sounds cool i read more i read one related to graphic designers you will probably check it out all right let me check that job opportunity oh it says it says that i have to work until night i don't mind working hey nice let's go and get the jobs that is the way we we use gerunds and short answers in real companies okay I need some volunteers to help me with the conversation. Me. Roxana, <laughs> again. Uh, me. Okay, let's go with Roy, right? Yeah. Yes. Okay, Roy, you will be John and 
Can you be Lisa? One, two, three. I really need to find a new job. So do I. Have you found any option, options yet? Yes. Look at this job opportunity. They are looking for a typist. I'm good to I'm good at using the computer than Microsoft Office package. I am not. I think you have to apply for that position and I have to look for more offers. You know I like designing apps. That sounds cool. I really want to relate to graphic designers. You will probably check check it out. All right, let me check that job opportunity. Oh, it say that have to work until night, but I don't mind working late. Nice, let's go and get the jobs. Yes, awesome. <laughs> All right, we'll have some, two more participants. Last participant, Robert Cabrera and I'll listen to Luis. <clears throat> Okay. Please, you will be John and Marina, you will be Lisa. That's okay. one, two, three. One, two, three. I really need to find a new job. So do I. I ha have you found any option yet? Yes. Look at this job opportunity. They are looking for a typist. Are you good at using the computer and Microsoft Office package? I am not. I think you have to apply for that position and I have to look for more offers. You know, I like designing apps. That sounds cool. I read one related to graphic designer. You will probably check it out. All right, let me check that job opportunity. Oh, it says that I have to work until night, but I don't mind working late. Night. Let's go and get the job. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Appreciate it. Well, perfect. Any questions about the conversation? That is where we use gerunds and include them. And we use short responses in conversations, real scenarios. Let you know if you have questions. Do you consider that everything is good? Teacher, no question. When when I have when I use gerunds, uh, uh, the verb it's always it's always uh, finally in ing. Yes, in ing always. form. Yes, okay. uh, it, it it depends. Listen, it depends on the verbs. It depends on the verbs because as we saw at the beginning, these are some common verbs that we use. Those are the main verbs. And we have then the, the second verb. The second verb is in ing form. For example, when you say, I start working um, in the in that company. I start, I start is one verb, I start. We have like, love, hate, enjoy, prefer, regret, imagine, I start, don't mind. That is another expression or form. With those specific verbs, we use the second verb in ing form. So this is a gerund. For example, another one, I love, say, she loves watching her movies. Okay? She loves watching her movies. Unless you will use it. Okay? Teacher. Okay, guys. Okay. 